Back in the spring of 1999, Matt, Al, Ann, and I traced our family roots right here on today. My family story began in France, Matt's in Romania, Al's in the Bahamas, and Ann's in Japan, which rhymes. Now we're going to go much further back in time thanks to a very ambitious project that uses DNA to unlock the secrets of the ages. And as NBC's Michael Oku explains, you can do it too. The search for our ancestors. It's a national pastime, the second most popular hobby after gardening. Now you have an opportunity to confirm whether those old grandmother's tales were accurate or weren't accurate. In perhaps the largest experiment of its kind, National Geographic and IBM have teamed up to collect DNA samples from around the world to learn more about your ancestors, where they came from, and when. By unlocking DNA, you can find out very interesting information about your personal migration pattern over the last tens of thousands of years. Called the Genographic Project, the theory behind the DNA testing is that we all share a common ancestor who lived in Africa 120,000 years ago. 60,000 years ago, our ancestors began migrating to the Middle East, India, Asia, Northern Europe. With each move, mutations occurred in the DNA, each mutation associated with a place and time in history. And that's the crucial link scientists need to be able to tell where you came from. So far, 60,000 people have submitted DNA samples. This is how it works. Send away for one of these kits in the mail. You'll see a couple swabs inside. Take one of the swabs out and swab the inside of your cheek for about 90 seconds. I'll do it for about three. Put the swab inside the tube, wait for about eight hours, and repeat the process. It's that simple. So simple, we put it to a test. Can't answer the phone, I'm busy scraping myself. Once the scraping is done, put the samples in the mail. The Genographic Group is trying to collect 100,000 DNA samples to help unlock the secrets of our past. For today, Michael Oku, NBC News, Tucson, Arizona. And Dr. Spencer Wells is the director of the Genographic Project. Dr. Wells, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. It, people immediately say, okay, this is your genealogy, and it's, it's actually not, it's, it's more than that, it's deep ancestry. What's the difference? That's right. Genealogy is really about the relationships we all think of when we think about our ancestors. So it's about your parents and your grandparents and so on. And we can all trace our family tree back a certain amount of time, a certain number of generations. But eventually we all hit a brick wall. And deep ancestry takes you beyond that. It takes you back into the realm of history using this, this tool we, we call DNA. We, we've learned uh, by taking part in this project that, that we all come from a haplogroup, okay? I guess we I all come... a hapless group. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, we all come from different haplogroups? Well, ultimately, we all share a common ancestor in Africa, and we only started to leave Africa within the last 50 to 60,000 years, as you just heard in that segment. So what we've done is we've been able to use DNA to reconstruct a family tree for the entire world, focusing largely on what we call indigenous populations. These are people who've remained in the same place for a very long period of time, and they give us the clues that tell us how we all migrated around the world. That's the real focus of the project. All right, let's talk about our family's so migration. That, can okay. I ask a quick Pretty question? Cool. Mitochondrial, whatever, how do you say that? Mitochondrial, Mitochondrial DNA. Whatever, thank you. That, that's so the maternal, yeah. This is, this is your maternal, maternal lineage. DNA. So you so, get it from your mother so and your why mother's can't you, mother. So why can't you discover this from your father's lineage? You can, men can study their mitochondrial DNA, but the problem is only women pass on their mitochondrial DNA to the next generation. Hmm. So on the male side, we look at a piece of DNA known as the Y chromosome. It's what makes men men. Okay, you can decide for yourself whether that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> they, they, they get a, they, you they can't get refuse it, can you? There was a pregnant pause there. Yeah, right. I was wondering what you were thinking. <laughs> they get it from their fathers and their father's fathers and so on. So it traces a purely male line back to the, the root of the family tree. We, we can look at the female side in the same way, but it's just that maternal line. So it's mother's, 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 mother, and so on. You've got the migrations for our individual families and our heritage here. So, so let's start with mine and, and describe what we're seeing on this particular map here. Well, we all start off 
in Africa, as I said. We originated as a species in Africa sometime between 50,000 and 200,000 years ago. We don't know for sure when the species as a, a proper entity originated, but at some point around 50 to 60,000 years ago, some people started to leave, others stayed on in Africa. Your ancestors started to leave around 45,000 years ago, and they took a route up through the Middle East. And again, this is looking at genetic markers, tiny changes that occur from time to time as you pass on your DNA to the next generation. At, at this time, we were all hunters and gatherers, right? We're hunters and gatherers living in, in the, the savannas of eastern Africa, hunting gazelle and so on. We're in the middle of an ice age, and some of your ancestors started to move up into the Middle East. And then from what you've told me, some of them decided, let's not hunt and gather anymore. Let's stay put. Let's grow our own food where we are. And that allowed them to establish villages and have more children. That's right. So from the Middle East, some of them headed east into Central Asia, populated ultimately the Americas and so on. Yours stayed put. Your ancestors stayed put. And around 10,000 years ago, they made this conscious decision to settle down, stay in one place, and grow their food rather, the, rather than hunting and gathering it. And your ancestors have a lineage we call J. Okay, it's very common throughout the Middle East, also found in North Africa. It's also found in some European populations, particularly people who have Eastern European Jewish ancestry. All right, and, and let's compare that now to Katie's story, okay. right? I think we're, we're sort of similar, aren't we, in some ways, in terms well, of our migration patterns? everybody starts off in Africa, Yeah, absolutely. And your ancestors also moved up into the Middle East around forty-five to 50,000 years ago. You are a member of a super clan, or a super haplogroup we call N. Of course. <laughs> And then this clan began to sort of split off, and your ancestors ended up in Europe during the worst part of the last ice age. Times are getting really rough. Ice sheets are coming down from the north, and your ancestors had to move down into refugia. When the weather turns bad, you head for the beach. Down in southern Europe, um, Spain, Italy, the Balkans, and so on, worst part of the last ice age, and after 15,000 years ago, as the glaciers started to retreat, they moved back up into the rest of Europe. So it's a very common European lineage, Apple Group K, we call it. Okay, mm -hmm. and Anne has an interesting background as well. Right. She also starts off in, in East Africa, just like everybody else, and just like Katie, moved up into the Middle East around 45 to 50,000 years Sister. ago. <laughs> Part of that same super clan, the N super clan, most of which went into to Europe, but some of them, a tiny little branch, headed over toward East Asia. Mm. And in addition to being N, you're actually a subtype of N known as N9A, which mm. is common in eastern Siberia, Japan, China, and so it's consistent with what I think you know about your, your mother's It is very family. consistent, but it's also interesting because, you know, it seems to me that uh, someone, we have so many other things in us, and you've picked sort of one. But, right. they, but you could actually take my background and find other things exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. So this is a single line of descent. It's about your mother's mother's mother mm. and so on. And, of course, it's a tiny fraction of your total DNA. Exactly. And one of the things we want to do during the course of this project is start looking at other regions of DNA to fill in the story. Right. Okay. And now for Al. I didn't, we didn't travel too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. You did. But you illustrate exactly why we're doing this project. So, again, you originated in Africa just like everybody else. And your ancestors stayed most mostly within Africa, probably moved up into northeastern Africa, and they had a marker which occurred called YAP. Again, this is one of those rare changes that occurs from time to time. Distinguishes your clan, your mm -hmm. lineage. You're a member of haplogroup E, we call it. Some of uh, the members of haplogroup E moved up into the Middle East. Yours turned towards central and western Africa. Mm -hmm. And today, most people who are African American are actually members of haplogroup E. But they're a member of a subset or a subclan within E, which you're not a member of. Mm -hmm. We don't know that much about the details of your particular subclan. Clan, but oh, that's one of the things. <laughs> it's one of the things we want to find out in, in the project, and this is part of the reason why I was over in Africa last week collecting samples in Chad. So as remarkable, it's amazing, it's amazing yeah. that you can figure all this out from a swab of DNA, and the goal is to really show what that that. We it's to explain the patterns of human diversity. We look around the world. We all seem to be so different. How different are we? Also, very clearly, we, we share a common ancestry very recently, within the last couple of thousand generations. So how did we move all over the planet? How did we generate these patterns of diversity? Well, it's it really isn't fascinating. And if people are interested in, in having this done? You can go to the website, nationalgeographic.com slash genographic, and check it out. If it sounds exciting, become a part of it. It's a chance to be part of a real-time scientific and, enterprise. And how much does it cost? It's ninety nine ninety nine, so okay. it's a hundred bucks. Yeah. Day. All right. Well, interesting. Thanks so much for coming Thank by you. this morning. Thanks. It's nice to have DNA testing where the results don't end up on Maury. <laughs> 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 You've been waiting to say that. <laughs> uh,